right, guys, welcome to a new episode of the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. I have nutritionist. This is going to be a long list. Uh, co <laughs> co owner of the Tampa Bay Brigade, nutritional coach, master's athlete, um, you know, YouTube, like, you know, uh, Instagram influencer, if you can call it, or like, you know, meme person. Uh, Jess Graceman, how you doing? Good. How you doing? Not bad. So we, we actually talked. It was, I, I actually looked back. It was like about a year ago. And obviously a lot has changed, uh, for, for the grid league, as well as, you know, teams and, and all that stuff. But, um, I, before we talk all about that, um, I do want to talk about the bills. Cause I know you're a big bills, <laughs> bills fan. And I'm, I was going to add bills mafia to my title when you're listing those things off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, um, I, I know, I know I wish I wish you guys be Kansas City because I can't I can't stay in Kansas City. They're the worst, the worst. But yeah. I mean, if if I, you know, since I'm a Patriots fan, I'd rather oh. have I'd rather have the Bills actually move forward into the Super Bowl than, you know, anybody else. You that know. says a lot being a Pats fan. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> But so what I have you heard any news lately about the bills or like um or digs? Is he leaving or what's oh what's god, I pray to god not. I mean, there's been like rumblings of things here and there, but I I can't honestly I can't I refuse to believe that he would leave the bromance of Josh Allen and Diggs. I just can't I refuse to believe that that's a possibility. So I'm gonna say no because I'm yeah. never gonna believe that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so how do you watch the games? Do you go on to go to like a restaurant or like you, is you just stream most of the stuff? Uh, like half and half. If I'm feeling lazy, we'll just watch it at home. But mo like, as it got more, once we went on like a six game winning streak, I was like, we got to do the same thing we did last week. I got to wear the same sh shoes. I got to wear like, cause I have like, you know, 17 different options for like Zuba's apparel. And I'm like, yeah. what did I wear? But we'll, we'll go to a Bill's backers bar. There's a ton of them around here. Like, it's just, it's insane. There's at least there's like four or five in like within 20 miles because we're just everywhere. Wow. So that's crazy. So so where I live, there's a lot of Ohio State fans down here. And it's like not and I'm a Michigan fan. So it's like I it's at nauseum. Like the one guy I've seen, he was driving a Porsche and he had a red racing stripe in the middle to look like a Buckeyes helmet. Yeah. All right. And I'm like. Uh, that is ugly. So ugly with like the little, <laughs> with the little, like the leave, like leaf stickers in the back and stuff. So it's, yeah. And like yeah. everyone hates, everyone hates the Patriots down here because being in Atlanta, obviously we kicked their butts in the Super Bowl. So that they weren't too, too big, too fond of us. Fans of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. um, but, uh, you, you actually, before, um, the open and everything that you went to the legends division. Uh, so, I, I didn't, to be honest with you, I didn't really see much of it. Um, I didn't really hear much of it. So yeah. can you, can you go over like what happened and like how you did during the, uh, legends, uh, you know, competition? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it. so there was no live stream this year. So that's probably why you didn't see much of it. The last couple of years, they've had like this crazy, amazing live stream. Um, like Sean Woodland, Anna Sakamoto, like they're all there broadcasting yeah. it. Um, they didn't live stream it this year. A lot of us were pretty pretty bummed about it. I actually talked to Joe, uh, Joe, the guy that one of the guys that runs this, uh, runs legends about it. And we talked a lot about it, uh, about a lot of things, but it was just like a, as far as the live stream go, it was just a choice they had to make between like budgeting and trying to figure things out for next year. And just, you know, so we, you know, obviously you understand you got to pick your battles and stuff. Um, but it was definitely a little bit of a bummer that way. But uh, I mean, Legends is one of my favorite. It's probably my favorite competition, not one of, it's definitely my favorite competition I do every year. Although now they add swimming. So it's knocked it down a peg. Because every year before that, I've gotten away with no swimming. They added swimming, and it was just awful. <laughs> like, yeah. awful. It was the first event, and I just, like, dug myself into a hole that I had to, like, I, like, worked my way out of it. But no matter how hard I practice, it just does not help. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, like, two strokes, and, like, I always, I always tilt my head to, like, one side every yep. single time. I can't. I can't do the three strokes because I'll just nope. freak out. And it's I'm not like, an ambi turner. I can't yeah. I can't do the both. I every two. I am the same way. But don't yeah. take advice from me because I suck at it. So yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm six six and like usually I'm like trying to like I actually I haven't swam in quite a while. So it's it's been a hot minute. Like I've been in the pool, but I've never really yeah. gone out and swam at all. But hey, I can't yeah, it's crazy. But um, did you hear the news that they're moving the masters um competition down to Birmingham? Yeah, so I've I've kind of known this was in the works for a little while because like 
like that meaning like the masters were breaking off into their own thing. So, and I mm -hmm. really, I knew like legends was going to be doing it, um, which is great because like they, they actually give a shit about masters and like they understand us pretty well. Um, I didn't know where it was going to be. They just released that. So um, yeah, they just released it like what today or something because everybody's talking about it now. So yeah. 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 So, so do you know like, any, like where the location in Birmingham is at or what's mm -hmm. the, not no, I just know it's the same weekend now as the teens at like Labor Day weekend, and it's not not the most ideal, but I'm guessing there wasn't a lot of venues available, and this was just kind of like their only option. So yeah, yeah. So are, so are the teens at Birmingham too as well? No, they're at um they're at their venue that they use for the pit teen throwdown. Okay. So I think one of the days is at their facility, and then the the next couple days. Um, it's somewhere close by is Cal. I feel, I heard the word Kalamazoo. I don't think that's correct. That can't be right. Um, but it's somewhere near that. Cause they do have to pay for a venue. So one of the, one of the days is at their venue. And then the other three days or however long it is, is like close by at a venue. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, wherever they're at their little place and then they're going to move. So, but yeah, not at the same place. So if you okay. have like an athlete that's old and young, you got to like, that's awkward. I don't, I wouldn't want to be involved in that. Yeah, try to divide and conquer and yeah. see who's like even like who's worthy to yeah. go, go who I like where, more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who pays me more? Who pays me more? Like mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I am actually it's it's Birmingham's not too far from, from where I live. So that's um, cool. So for for you well, when for the masters uh competition, like what was the traveling? Like how how much did it roughly cost you to actually go to the competition and, and like you know stay there for the couple of days? Yeah. So flights, um, I don't remember. I remember like telling all this because they asked us about this actually. Um, I got an Airbnb. So, I mean, it, it was roughly all together. I want to say it was between like three and $4,000 between like flights for me and my husband, Airbnb for the whole week. Cause we stayed a couple extra days, um, to go to like Sedona and cause it was in Arizona. So yeah. we stayed a couple extra days. So, I mean, I'm factoring that in as well, um, to go to Sedona for a couple of days, check that place out um and like food and all that and all that kind of stuff so definitely it's not a cheap adventure um you know but it's it's the biggest thing that we do all year so i mean it's to me it's worth it so yeah yeah and do you think they could have done like a um uh what you, a chase ingram you know kind of boot like bootleg you know stream that they did for like one of the competitions for the semis yeah, like I never, and I mean, this is easy for me to say because I'm not on that end of things, but like I, I, everybody always says like, you could just have someone there like live streaming on their phone and it's not great quality, but like, I feel like they could have had something, something, uh, but again, I don't know the logistics behind it. I, maybe if they didn't want, if it wasn't as high quality as they're used to, they didn't want to half-ass it, you know, like the stationary corner and the, the camera in the corner, like they did at the games. Um, so maybe there was just like a, Hey, if we can't do it all out, we're not going to half-ass it can't use our whole ass we're not gonna do it so yeah. maybe yeah. that was the but yeah because like even at like semis i think it was not even just chase but it was um like brian friend and all them they were just there like live streaming it and did their own little production so i i, yeah. I guarantee you there's someone that would have done that for free yeah I, like, I, in a heartbeat I, I mean they could use this this platform here Streamyard, that like like everyone yeah. else everyone else uses it and just the way I think the way that Chase did it was they used their own uh, StreamYard platform and then sent the links over to a couple of the people on their okay. phones and then that's how they that and they literally were holding their phone, you know, on it, yeah, on it and, and just and just like and then going from like camera to camera or whatnot. So yeah, because they had like four or five different things going on, like angles and stuff, and like different. Um, there's like two. Uh, oh my god, like stages. Yeah. You know? So yeah. they had. They had a lot going on, so I don't know. But, but to be honest, it, it does. It, I can imagine it costs a lot of money to get that whole production. It's. Even, I mean, I know how much it is for grid, so I can't even imagine. I. I don't know if it's similar. It's got to be, but it's a stupid amount of money. It's just. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's. Yeah. It, it's. It's crazy. It's crazy. But um, your your Instagram has been kind of popping off lately. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes I choose violence and it just goes everywhere so. <laughs> so so the last last time i think we talked i think you were at like 30k or like roughly around that and now you're at like what 63 right now um somewhere in the mid 50s somewhere there yeah okay. i try not to pay okay. too much attention to it because it just like it goes up and down and i don't understand any of it there's no rhyme or reason i you know so i try not to pay too much attention to it 
Yeah. So, so when did you, when, when did you start seeing that uptick of more followers and engagement in your posts? Um, probably, uh, maybe a couple, maybe, maybe two years ago. Okay. Um, cause like when I first, it's funny because I never even like wanted Instagram. Like I thought it was so stupid. This was like, I don't know, maybe 2000. 18 ish not because i was it was definitely after i left teaching because there's no way i had this kind of instagram when i was a teacher because my students would watch it and there's no <laughs> way so anyway um so it must have been like around that and my friends like you gotta do instagram you can get free stuff i'm like why would i do instagram facebook you can post videos you can post pictures like i had no idea what instagram was and i thought it was like i'll never do it because it's so stupid you could post statuses on facebook Anyway, fast forward and now it's now I that's really the only thing I use. So yeah. So a, a couple of years ago is when it kind of started to get ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And you started doing reels and you kind of do it did we're doing like meme reels a little bit. Yeah. So like cause I used to I used to just really just post like my workouts because I'm like, well, I'm I'm like filming my stuff for my coach anyway. So I might as well just like, hey, here's my workout, put like music to the background of her. And then I every once in a while I would just post, I, I don't know, make like a something stupid. I think they're stupid, but like just something funny. And like, those would be the ones that like blow up. And I'm like, what is going on? So like, I I'm naturally just ended up doing more of that and less of my workouts because I feel like it's so saturated with just like, Hey, this, unless you're like a, like crazy games athlete, like Tia or something. And you could just post a video of you doing this once and get like 300,000 likes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, it's, it's just felt more natural for me to kind of go more towards like, not like more personal, but like just weird stuff that i think of and like the more of like the meme side of things and yeah that's what people tend to like a little bit more yeah the, the one the, there's two of them that i really like the one of them was like the hip thruster reel yeah <laughs> and so like we're like you like all all like the fitness influencers showing off like how much weight they could do in a hip thrust and then like look at someone that was staring at them or something like that yeah like i don't understand it's like oh i can this is my hip thrust max i'm like who tests this why is that? I mean, I get it why it's functional, I guess, but like, why are you testing your hip thruster max and why? Yeah. And I'm like, then you always got to like awkwardly stare at people around when you're doing it, you know, cause you're just like humping this giant thing in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, where, like, do you schedule these out? Like, do you plan them like a, like a couple days before? Or is it just like, all right, well, I'm just going to do this right now. Uh, you know what? I don't, I, I have no, like, no, like some, sometimes, yes. Like if I'm partnering like with peachy, sometimes I'll, I'll get an idea and I'll like warn her. I'll be like, like the last one I just did. I'll like, just be prepared. And she'll be like, Oh God, what are you doing? I'm like, don't worry about it. And then I'll make it and I'll like, we'll collab on it. Um, some things I get an idea for, and then I just wait till I have time and I'm like, Oh, I got 10 minutes. I'll do this real quick. But I, I don't really have like a, I don't schedule them. I don't like use an app to like post it at a specific time. I just, when I have time, I do it. And then sometimes I make one and I forget about it. I'm like, Oh shit, I got to post that. So yeah, it's just kind of like I go with the flow and cause then every time I try real hard, it there's like two likes and one that I don't try hard. I'm like, this is dumb. It'll go through the roof. And I'm like, I don't understand any of this. No, it yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah. I, it's, it's crazy. Cause, um, I, I, I mainly do like YouTube shorts which you should really consider doing as well to be honest with yeah. you so um because all you could do is just post the reels that you have on instagram yeah over over to youtube and it's like it's really easy and just use like the different hashtags and like tags and stuff like and it's like you can you can start get a big following and then you can monetize and make money is it of easier than TikTok? because i don't i hate that thing i hate it huh? it makes no sense to me i don't understand it I, 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 to be honest with you, I like a lot of people like TikTok, but I think it's, I think YouTube is the YouTube one is better than TikTok. Better. Yeah. It yeah. has to be because I don't understand TikTok. To, I'm like, forget it. I try. I'll just like my videos do so much better on Instagram. I, I just, I don't understand. I'm just not a, I'm not a talker of the tick. I don't get it. I don't know. Yeah. I, I like, cause I would post something that like would, that was killing it on like Instagram or like YouTube. And then I yeah. post it and it's like, 200 views and i'm like what the, and i right. granted, yeah. granted granted i do i i'm i'm being honest i don't post regularly on tiktok i'm more of a more of a watcher than than a poster so it's mm -hmm. like i'm like okay i kind of see that like you know i'm barely posting so it's not really worth tiktok's time to yeah to, to put you in the thing in the yeah. Algorithm. yeah so but i i i post i usually post a short on um youtube like almost every single day and it's like mainly like me doing lifts like that. That's it. And it's yeah. like, 
like 44 year old crossfitter does like you know x amount of weight for this many yeah. reps and like all these people were like holy shit you're old but that's amazing so <laughs> perfect you know, and, and it's like wh whatever you take it and then like yeah. you know, some some of them will shoot up you know and, and some of them won't and so yeah the, the ones that blow up, ones that blew up for me are the ones that i'm like my face is in it and that's it and it's like someone else else lifting or doing like bailing, not bailing on a lift and like almost getting hurt and saying, what are you doing in this situation? Or, you know, don't be this guy on the, on yeah. the lifting platform. And so he fell backwards and like had the bar on his neck. And so it was just like those, but I'm like, and then I post other things and it's just like, I get, I don't get the engagement, which, which whatever it, it's the algorithm. It's, it's what, what yeah. like, yeah, it's hit or miss. So, but like, yeah, it's, I, I, I think YouTube is a lot more fun than actual TikTok. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's, 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 that's I didn't that's even think of that. Like I, I see them all the time. I never really want, well, I shouldn't say that. Like, I'll watch YouTube shorts every once in a while, but my husband actually was going through YouTube videos to find me in a fail video. And he was convinced he was going to find me. And at one time he's just like, I'm going to see you in one of these. I'm going to, cause like sometimes my videos get like taken and like somebody be like, is this you? And I'm like, yeah. And it's me doing something dumb or getting hurt. And sure as shit, one night I'm sleeping, he screams, I wake up, and it's the video of me in my sister's basement with the resistance band, and I'm trying to fix my pants, and I drop it, and it smacks my toe, and I'm just yep. like, yeah, that one was in a random YouTube fail video, and he found it. Yeah. Yep. I, it's funny, like, people repurpose everyone's video content oh, yeah. all the time, and, it, and it's like, it's almost like, all right, it's on there, it's fair game. If you, if you yeah. do like a screen record, you know, have at it, you know? It, yeah. Like, but yeah, it's, you should really consider going on YouTube shorts. Yeah. I mean, shoot, why not? Uh, I mean, why not get on another platform? You know? I know. <laughs> it's not like, yeah, YouTube, Instagram is, I feel like it's a part-time job. It's like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. Yeah. Cause yeah. I run my business page and now I'm like running the Tampa Bay Brigade page and I run the kids grid page and I'm like, I can't do all this. This is too many. Yeah. I need more of me to do all that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's like, and it's like, I, so my wife is like really big on Instagram. She's got like, I think, I think last time I checked today, it was like 302,000. Oh, good Lord. So like followers. Yeah. And so she, she does reels all the time. And it's like, I help her out with like her social media stuff because, um, she needed help. So, and it's like, I try to get information from her a little bit, but it's just like, we're in like two complete different genres than like. Yeah for each other and it's like really hard for her to be like all right you may want to consider this or consider that because it's like it's she's she's coming from like a fashion side not like a fitness okay. side yeah so, but it's crazy like so i i don't i, I so i, I want to know if you get this she gets so many people dming her especially guys asking for feet pics <laughs> um i get a lot of weird i had a guy message me today about arm wrestling and I'm like, what? Like, I, I, it is rare if I respond to a DM from someone I don't know. Usually it's like, if they're asking me something legit, like, hey, how do you get into competing? Or like, hey, I don't know, asking about something that like, not weird. You know what I mean? But I've got, there's some, there's some things, man. People got balls and I don't know if they just I think know. we're never going to respond or, but I'm like, if you wouldn't say it to the person to their face in person, you should not message them that sentence, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of guys on her DMs have like a lot of cojones too. And it's just like, they, they will say a comment on her, on her, like her actual post. And then I don't know, she they would go on Facebook and try to reach out to her. And then they would go on her DMs through like, um, they would go through her DMs during, what do you call it? Um, through Instagram. And it's just yeah. like crazy. And like, I'll, and they're like, I'll pay you to oh, send yeah. your feet picks over. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, <laughs> well, let's I'm see. Like, it's just feet. Should I? <laughs> I'm like, That's should, we monetize. I'm like, should I go on like feet finder and like post her feet on there and just kind of <laughs> like use her? And she's like, don't use me for money. And I was just like, come on. It's so easy. Like I won't, yeah. even put your, I won't even put your face on there. Right. So I wonder if you, do you have to put your face on there? Cause if not, then you're good. I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I looked at the website. I'm like, there's no way that thing called feet finder. And I, lo and behold, I was like, I yeah. Googled it and feet finder popped up. I'm like, this is it's unreal. A thing. Yeah. It, oh, it's nuts. 
It's yeah. nuts. I've had people there. There's a couple people that are just like ridiculously persistent, like rid like for years. I'm telling, like, I'm like, man, they just don't get the hit either. Like, I yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, shoot your shot, man. You never. I guess you never know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and she shows me some of the DMs, and I'm like, that's that's a lot of balls for saying something like that. A lot yeah. of balls. I think um, guys make like collages of him and I together, and like, look at how great we could be, and like. Like sometimes they find pictures. I don't know where they get them from. And I'm like, where did, you? yeah, I don't know. It, it's interesting. Insane. Insane. But, um, you were talking about grid. So, um, before we talk about the mer kind of like the merger. So last season, how, how did it go for you guys? Um, it didn't go great. <laughs> um, we had some just freak accidents happen. Um, I feel like this is the second year in a row that that's happened, but, um, we just, I'll say, I'll say this, we, this year, I'm a little bit, I'm more excited this year because we, we just kind of cleaned house. Um, we had to, I'm just going to say this politely. We just, we only want team players on our team. We can't have individually minded players because that shit spreads like a cancer. And yeah. that's what happened this past season. And we're like, we can't have that. So I, I think what sometimes happens is you have like individual players that come to a team um, and they just, they can't, the team doesn't revolve around them or what they want. It might not be what's best for the team and they maybe can't handle that yeah. or they, you know, so yeah. And I, I have to do what's best for the team. So if it's not that, then we can't have them back. So yeah. I'm excited to see, we have some studs coming to our combine, our tryout this Sunday. So I can't wait to see that. But yeah, I mean, this past season wasn't, wasn't great. Um, we did have some really good moments, but you know, I mean, we didn't, obviously we always want to win the whole thing. And when you don't, it's kind of like, Mer, kind of like the bills when they never win the Super Bowl, you know? So, but, um, yeah. So I think, I think this year we're going to be in a much better, um, like, like team state. Cause we were in a great, like at the end of this past at the end of 2022, we were in, so, even though like we had, um, somebody get injured. So like we were in such a good mindset. And then unfortunately this past year, there was just a couple players who didn't get a lot of playing time or they just thought this thing should be a certain way when it wasn't. And they just, they got upset and yeah. So we had to just kind of be like, listen, not working out. We're going to clean house and, and get team, uh, team players who understand like the overall goal. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'd rather take new people that don't even know what grid is that are coachable and like moldable. And they understand like, I'll do whatever you need. Yes. Great. Um, to, to mold those people then, you know, dealing with like individual egos that just don't mesh well with the team. Yeah. I I've noticed that like, obviously grids, grids, a team sport and it's not like an individual sport. So people mm -hmm. that like are so used to doing CrossFit on their own and if they don't have like a team's background at all, or they yeah. thought, or like, they were like really like they were a starter all four years in like high school and college or, or whatever, like, and they think they yeah. just need to start. They just, it it's, they, they need they need the red they need a reality check when they do go to yeah. something completely new and so yeah. yeah i mean when i was in college i wasn't expecting to start i was like i was like okay whatever if it you know i'm just i'm just here i'm here to play if you need me for anything like special teams whatever i'm i'm, yeah. I'm here so but yeah it's 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 kind of tough like so how do when you when you get people on the team do you do like like interviews, like, almost like interviews and stuff, just to say, like, just to see if it's even worth entertaining the idea that to have them on your team. Yeah, like, there's a couple different processes. So, like, if they're local, we'll hopefully see them in person, get to like not even tell them they're being interviewed, but we can kind of get like a vibe from them, like, hey, how do you operate? Like, hey, can you show us these tests? See how they interact with the team. Um, and we can, we can usually get a good like when you see them once or twice or interact with them, we can kind of get a vibe of them of like, hey, are you going to mesh well? Not mesh well. Uh, and stuff like that. If they're not local, it's a little bit trickier because you're not seeing them in person. Um, and sometimes we, sometimes we pick wrong, you know, and it just, that happens. Or sometimes somebody's really good at just faking being a team player and then they end up not being, um, that doesn't happen very often, you know, but like most, and we had a couple of situations last year where we were, um, we were down a couple players and had to sign three girls, um, for the last two batches. And we lucked out because we had this one girl, Jocelyn, who um, super strong girl. We needed a strength girl. And she she's like, yeah, I'll come try out. We just had like a little mini tryout. And she was like, I'll do whatever you want. I'll do whatever you need. And she was super coachable. I was like, I love you. You are in. Um, and then we actually had two of our kid grid players um, come up, Ari and Bella, that were um, 
17, one of them just turned 18. They played up for the first time in like grid season history. So that oh, was wow. sick because yeah, we had like a little farm team situation going on. Um, and I was lucky cause I already knew them. I already knew they knew grid. I knew their personalities. I knew that, you know, they would mesh well. Um, so yeah, for the most part, we try to meet them in person, um, and kind of get a good vibe from them first. And we explained to them like, Hey, you're not get, Don't expect to be in every single race. Don't expect like you're on a team. We try to explain it as best we can. And some people are like, Ooh, I need to, I need special this, that we're like, all right, you know, maybe it's not for you. And other people are like, I'll do whatever you want, you know? So you can, you can get that. You can kind of feel that vibe from people pretty well. Yeah. And and I've heard there's like, you can get like, maybe like a person just to do like one thing, which is like burpees to touch the rings. And like, that's, that's their whole yeah. job and that's it. Yeah. So it that used to be a lot more, um, eminent, like in the MPGL, you would have a player that's literally you have one race you're in all year, but it's such a like specific specialty that like no one else can do it. And they're like, yep, this is all you do. And that's it. Um, it's a, we don't really have that many people that are only doing maybe one thing all season, but that burpee to that nine foot, nine inch burpee to ring touch that will win or lose you the whole, the sprint relay, which is worth three points, sometimes four, if they throw a bonus flag that could mm -hmm. change the whole match. And it's like, it could be going well. And then all of a sudden they miss one or they hit it out of the, and it's game over. Um, but yeah, there's, this is not a team sport where everybody plays the same. It's not where like we've had players and this was one of the problems we had last year where maybe a player was used to being one of the more prominent players and, but maybe things change and we have, you want depth on your team. Like you don't want someone to have to be in every single race because by the end of it, they're probably tired where somebody fresh coming in would be more effective. Yeah. Um, so like the first couple of seasons, I had to be in every single race, every single race. And um, then the past couple of seasons, I kind of got a little bit of a break and I was like, all right, this is nice. Um, but then like last season when we got, had some people got hurt or whatever, they couldn't make it. I had to go back to being in it. And I don't necessarily like that all the time. I'm dead tired by the time some of the harder races come up at the end. So it's like, we're trying to get more people in this season. So we don't have to have several players being in all the races um, just because it's not, you want to have people that are fresh towards the end of the match when everybody else is kind of like going down. So, yeah. Yeah. So since being the owner and, and co-captain, so I, I know I've, I looked at the grid website and so a lot of the different teams have podcasts as well. So does the brigade have their own podcast? Nope. Dude. Definitely not. No. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we would, that'd be awesome. We don't have enough manpower for that, but um, I mean, that would be cool. I usually, I just kind of like I did one this morning uh, or like, I'll just do random podcasts, just explaining to people what grid is, how it's going. So, but we don't have like a dedicated one to our team. I think the sharks, the sharks I know have one or had one or have one. I don't know if it's, it probably still exists. Um, I don't know what, what other teams um, have it on there, but yeah, I think a couple of them definitely do. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's really not that hard to do a podcast. <laughs> it's really not. It's really not. Um, yeah. But yeah. It's pretty easy. I mean, if you really want to do one, I can, I can show you, the, I can show you the way. So all right, but I got YouTube and I got podcasts. All right. I'm going to get on yeah. all that stuff. I'm going to join the, the, the 21st century here. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, with, so obviously the big news came out a little while ago that they're, they're merging. Um, I, so is it and now, and now is it the NG um, NGPL league or like what, what, what is it considered now? So yeah, the MPGL was back in the day. That was um like 2000, I want to say seven. That was our, yeah, yeah. Early. Yeah. That was so that is no more. This is completely separate. Although one of the guys that used to um run one of the teams, uh Mather Riswell, he's the one that started the uh I said MPGL, the Florida Grid League. Um yeah. so we have just changed the name to United Grid League um okay. simply because of the growth we've had over the past four years. Like 2020 just it went crazy. Everybody was on their phones and on their computers all the time, just started watching all the reels and then everything went crazy. Um, and we have te we have players from all over the country. We even have a player from Colombia. Like it's not just, oh, wow. it started out in 2017. We were all super local. We were all in like the Tampa, Orlando area. There was a couple, maybe one random person here and there, but we were all within like, I don't know, a 30, 50 mile radius. Now we have players from, Texas, Georgia, California, uh, Pennsylvania, New York, like everywhere. So it's, it doesn't really make sense to make it the Florida grid league anymore. We actually, one of our teams just changed from the Gainesville wild to the Atlanta wild. So yeah. now we actually have a team that's outside of Florida. So they're in Georgia now. So it's the Florida name just felt very like exclusive and maybe that's not the right word, but like very small and limited and people all the time, like, Oh, do we have to be in Florida to play? And it's like, no, you can be from anywhere. So we needed something that would, 
explain that a little bit better like hey and united also came from the idea of it's a co-ed league guys and girls play on the same team it's all different body types all different types of people different backgrounds um so it's just like we're all kind of united in this one thing this like one like family of hey we like to fitness really fast and and we're all really competitive so yeah that's awesome so what what was the game plan of of the wild moving to atlanta compared to I like staying think, in florida i think most of the players are from atlanta Okay. Like in that area. So it just didn't make, cause originally the team was, um, I believe the team was owned by somebody else and they were in the Jacksonville area. And then over the last couple of years, more players, there wasn't really many people in Jacksonville. So it really didn't make sense for them to have that name anymore. Um, and a lot of their players are more in that Atlanta, Georgia area. So they're like, let's just fix it. So, mm -hmm. so do they have a, do they have a gym or like an area where they're actually doing the competition in Atlanta? Do they have that already set up? You think? You mean like for our, the matches throughout the league or yeah, the season? Correct. Yeah. Oh, uh, so the matches are at um like we we've been growing for this too because we used to have our matches at Valor Fitness um in Tampa and then mm -hmm. also like those would be the North matches for the the four North teams and then the South would have their matches in the South for the four South teams. Lately, in the past three three seasons, I want to say, um, we've been having our matches at like big ass expos. So it's not necessarily like in the cities of the teams, it's where these expos are. So our usual, usually our season opener is at the USA Fit Expo, which is in Orlando. And then we have one at the Miami, last year we had the Miami International Fitness Expo in Miami. Uh, we had our playoffs, we had one at Mr. Olympia this year because it was in Orlando. So we, all of our matches were at these big expos with like 40,000 plus people at them. Um, we still had one match at, at, at Valor Fitness still. So it was a local Tampa um, event as well. But we're we're trying to get into these bigger venues because we're we're growing. There's more people, more eyes on the sport. You know, people are walking by like, what the heck is that? And they just like, <laughs> you know, they never heard of us, but they're seeing these yeah, people yeah. flip around on rings and lifting ridiculous weights. And they're like, I want to watch that. So yeah, yeah. so it's, it doesn't matter. Like the matches don't necessarily happen in the cities. It's just where um, where we can get the venues at the, at the expos and the exposure and stuff like that. Okay. And I've, I've noticed on YouTube as well as like TikTok and those other platforms that like the grid grid, like following has gotten absolutely yeah huge, just ridiculous. So, yeah. yeah. And it, and it's like, just looking from where you guys first started, like even, even a year ago when I, when I, yeah. talk, like a little over a year ago, when I talked to you, it was like from then to, to now, it's like nuts, man. It's, I yeah. remember we just, cause we're looking, we're looking for team sponsors. If anyone wants to sponsor our team. Um, and I'm sending out these emails with those stats and it was like 2017, we started with like a couple thousand followers and like maybe a couple hundred people at the venues. And now across all their social media, it's over a million followers and tens of thousands of people. At the, it's just, it's nuts. COVID something happened and it just skyrocketed. Their mm -hmm. followers went just cause we used to have like, be like 4,000 followers. And now it's just insane. Every time they tag me in a video, I'm like, oh God, here we go. Cause it's just like notification, notification, notification. And half of them are good. Half of them are bad. I'm just like, whatever works. They're getting, people are seeing grid. That's all I care about. They can make yeah. fun of it or love it, whatever. Yeah. And, and it's like, like me watching it is like you all, all you guys are like so fast paced and it's just like, like, cause that, cause that's the competition to go as yeah. fast as possible or like, you know, and do whatever. And it's like, people are not really getting it no and understanding at it. all that, that's the problem at all. especially with like doing like butterfly pull up butterfly pull ups like even just even just doing a video of that i got yeah. like so much hate for that oh of and course then, because nobody yeah, yeah because it's floppy full and that's not real pull off blah 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 i get yeah, it i get it yeah and so they see like you doing like toes to bar to chest to bar and then like to, to a muscle up and they're like how how is what like what is yeah. that and the so, best was, um, I think my friend was, my teammate was doing toes to bar. Oh, I think she was doing, she was either doing, I think she was doing toes to bar. And so I was like, those aren't real pull-ups. We're like, you fucking idiot. They're toes to bar. But she was going so fast and she's so short. So like her range of motion is really small. And she does like this pull, um, like this kind of like, it's like a little early pull, but it shortens the range of, it makes it more efficient. And she's doing toes to bar and people are like, those aren't real pull-ups. We're like, what are you talking about? You yeah. know, and it's like people don't understand this is, oh, that's not good training. You'll never, you're going to hurt. Like, this isn't training. This is the sport. Like, this is the sport. This is not the training. The training happens. That's the boring stuff, the slow stuff. This is the, yeah. People won't get it. We just stop. I used to like respond to everything. Like, you don't, now I'm like, you'll never understand. If you don't yeah. get it, you'll never understand. Yeah. Yeah. And I would literally take the, the chest of our pull up, like the butterfly pull up, like uh thing from CrossFit. 
and literally copy and paste it onto the the reply message. Yeah. And, and they're like, oh, CrossFit's stupid. I'm like, okay. All right. Yeah. That's my favorite too. When people are like, they'll respond to a video on the grid page, like CrossFit's dumb. I'm like, good thing this isn't CrossFit. But please tell me you don't know what you're like. Continue to be mad about a sport you don't understand. Yep. Even course. talking to people about CrossFit, they're like, these are so. That's why, like, one of the videos I have pinned are like me doing butterfly chest to bar because I'm like, oh, because we can't do real ones. And then I'm repping out 45 pound plate between my legs, but nobody wants to, you know, they just don't get it. And I try to explain it like it's about efficiency, it's about, you know, blah, blah, blah. But nobody, yeah, they just want to yep. flap their gums. Yep. Nobody cares. Nobody cares yep. at all. But, um, so is are the prize money for the championship or like for teams at all is that going to get more bigger at all for um like the end of the year or since you've gotten a lot more eyes on the sport through like youtube and the other social media platforms from like ad revenue i mean that i think that's the plan go like they, we have like a crazy ass five-year plan like to be in stadiums, to be at these, you know what I mean? Like maybe it's not five, I think it was 50, whatever Mather said. It was like this huge, like long-term plan, you know? And it's like, it's it's doable. It's, we're getting there, we're growing. Um, the prize money, they haven't said anything about that getting bigger as of like this year, maybe even next year. Cause I think whenever we, as we grow, they're constantly putting stuff back into the sport, trying to make things better and like experiences better for the athlete, getting the athletes more sponsors. Cause like the athletes will make money, not just from, you know, winning the championship. Like we make, we get sponsors, we get opportunities and stuff like that. So it's, they're always looking for ways to make the athlete, uh, have a better experience, have more opportunities. So it's like, they're, they're always putting it back into the league. Um, so, and I don't think, I mean, people that have been there, even not even from the beginning, but that truly love and understand it, they're not doing it for the money. They really, like, at least I'm not like, I, you know what I mean? Like I just truly loved playing it and like, being a part of it. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's an, a, an idea down the road. Um, cause I mean, they're, they're in partnerships with trying to get, um, like broadcast, like getting this stuff, um, onto a network. So, and they're, they were in big talks. I don't know if it's going to happen this season, but they're getting closer every year with talking with a couple different options. So yeah, I can't, Very I can cool. see that being an option in the future. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, I, I would love to see, to see it grow because you know, yeah. other sports out there, you know, other than football, baseball, basketball, and soccer, yeah. you know, kind of, you know, get it out there. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so, so with all the YouTube stuff and everything like that, so I know you said you're looking for sponsors. So like what, what kind of sponsors are you looking for, for, for the team? So, I mean, we've worked with all different types of brands. We've worked with clothing brands, food brands, um, mm. like grips, uh, accessory brands. Um, like this year, we're partnering with Health Pod. They do like lab work to help you make sure like all your stuff's working right. Um, so there's really no limit as far as like who, what type. Um, but we have like different sponsorship packages that will like based on what the brand's looking for. Like a lot of it is content creation because the league obviously does a ridiculously good job with that. So like we'll make them content reels. We're showing off their brands. They can have access to players. They can get booth space at these crazy giant expos that normally cost like three grand just to walk in the door as a vendor there. Um, they get ad space on our jerseys. They have their big logo on our jerseys. They can get like ad space on the floors. Like there's there's a whole different option, bunch of options for um, for partners based on what they're looking for. We have a bunch of options that are already like created, but we've also worked with brands that are like, hey, what's your budget? What are you specifically looking for? And then the, the league will just custom make one uh, based on what they need. So, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So typically for, for a team, how many sponsors do you usually have per team? Um, ever it ranges. So like, yeah. ideally we would have maybe a couple bigger sponsors um, just so it doesn't overwhelm the team of like, Hey, you know, post about this, talk about that. What do you know? So, but like last year we had um, last year we had four, um, four small, one bigger one, a couple smaller ones. There's one team that has like seven. It just depends on like, there's no limit. It just depends on what you agree with. Like if you get a sponsor that's, Hey, I want exclusivity. I want to be the only people in your Jersey, nobody else. Then obviously that's going to cost a little bit more, but you're going to get a lot more exposure. You're going to get more athletes on board. You're going to get more for what you're paying for. So, uh, yeah, there's no, some people just get one big ass one for like 10 grand and that's all they need. Other people get like maybe 10 small little ones for a little bit here and there. So it, yeah, there's no. There's no answer to that question. <laughs> yeah. I, I can imagine like some random guy that like likes grid. He's like, I would like my state farm agency name on, on, yes. on the back of your shirt. Yes. Please. But hey, I'll, I'll promote state farm. If somebody wants to give us that kind of money. Cool. 
<laughs> I'll switch my insurance. No problem. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, are, are, are you, are you guys looking to expand? I know, I know you have the team in Atlanta, like you said before, mm -hmm. but are you looking to like expand into like Texas, Mississippi, like kind of like North Carolina or South Carolina? Like what's, is it, is this like for this year or the next year coming up? Like to, yeah. to further it out? Yeah, we're actually um, in the works of talking with possible new teams. Probably not for this year because that's way too coming way too fast. Right? Yeah. I feel like we literally just stopped last season and we're already coming in the season. Mm -hmm. uh, but there, the league is in the talks with I think six different possible owners. Uh -huh. um, so we we have to get we can't just get like one new team. We have to get like one on each side, right? Or like two on each side. It can't just be one because then it's all weird uh, bracket style wise. So uh, yeah, they're definitely there. They're always looking to expand. It just takes a lot of um, like finding the right because we just don't want anybody like we just yeah. don't want somebody like, yeah, I want to own a team and then they're not dedicated. They're not, they don't understand it. They're not. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. It's not just like a you know, a hobby, like a, a thing you kind of try at. It's like you got to you got to be dedicated to this stuff. So they're they're making sure that these people are qualified, um, that they they mesh well with the the mission and where the league is going. Um, uh, but they've they've been in the works of talking with I believe at least six different owner possibilities. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Really cool. I wish it was gonna happen this year, but I'll be patient. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I mean, you can't it, it can't be like noble that just like literally just throws everything out and then all of a sudden it just like craps yeah. the bed. So no, yeah, no. So so speaking of noble, so with your orange shoes, like, what are you gonna do with Noble if since if they're not really doing so hot? Are you have you found like other orange shoes yet? It's so funny because like I once everybody started shitting on Noble, like I, I was like I can't wear these anymore, and I kind of like I wore them out and they're kind of they're dead. Uh, I still have them. I was like maybe I'll just like wear them every once in a while, but um, I started. I have like six different brands of shoes in my locker at the gym. Whether I like won them, it's because I won like a pair of tears. Uh, cause I, for winning like Tampa Bay games, I got innovates from grid last year. I have strike movement from something. I don't remember why I have, um, nanos that I got it. They gave us at legends. And then I have my born primitive savage shoes. Those are probably my favorites. I've been wearing those nonstop. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. I'm like, can you get more colors please? Cause right now they only have like white and black. Cause like, can you get maybe orange, just get some maybe orange shoes? No. Yes. So yeah, I'm trying to, broaden my horizons, but I did put orange shoelaces in the white ones. So at least there's something in there. I had to, I had to put something in there, you know? Yeah. yeah you, you could always paint it too. That's true. I can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, with the, I, uh, I actually talked about the born pair of his shoes to a bunch, a bunch of my buddies on the podcast and like the way they look, they don't look, I, I just, for me, they just don't look appealing. Especially with the yeah. born, with the born primitive, like the logo's pretty big. Yeah, yeah, exactly the huge yeah. ass logo, and I'm like, that doesn't. I mean, I don't think it looks so hot, but like for a person that's worn them and you know competed in them, yeah. What What are your? Th I know you said they're your favorite, but like, what What made you make them your favorite compared to all the other shoes that you've had? So I apparently must have like weird feet that don't. I can't wear Metcons; they're too narrow. Um the nanos that's why i liked the nobles because they were like obnoxiously wide and like could fit my feet mm -hmm. so and i would wear the nanos i actually got the nano whatever the hell they're called x3 i don't know they were like magenta i was like oh my god that's such an obnoxious color i want them i got them they were so uncomfortable and the heel was like massive and i'm like i want to feel the floor and I, I really tried to like them. And then once the, my born primitive ones came in the mail and I just opened them, I was like, oh my God, my feet will fit. Like just, I could tell by the shape of them that this was going to be great. And I immediately returned the Reebok ones. Um, so they're, they're breathable. I can, they're minimal. Um, the top, so it's kind of like a mesh between nano two. I don't know if you ever, do you know what strike movement is? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. They I've have a them. really breathable top mesh. Um, it's kind of like the two of those had a baby and made a shoe that is still stable. <laughs> so, cause I like the strike movement, but I, I can't lift in them. Um, and they hurt my feet after a little while. Um, the nanos I've, I've always been a nano person up until like nine. Then I was like, I'm done with this. I'm sick of it. And then that's when I switched to noble and I was like noble forever. And I'm like, wow, these are getting boring. They're the same thing. And, uh, nothing's getting any better. So yeah. Um, that they're just, they're comfortable. I didn't have to break them in at all. I'm also lazy and I can leave them tied and take them on and off. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Probably not. You're not supposed probably, to do that. Probably not. Um, 
yeah, probably not. Um, so yeah, I, they're just, they fit my feet. That is like literally they're comfortable. They required no break in. I can lift in them. I could run in them. I could wear them for a very long time. Like I'll wear them all day at the gym. Cause usually I'm, I'm, I'm working out coaching. I have to leave to go like do like if I have a PT client come back. So yeah, they're right now. They're my, they're my go-tos. Yeah. For, for me, like I'm, I'm a, I'm a, a Mekong guy. Or that that's just i've yeah. i've tried nanos. i wish i could wear them they have such fun colors but they don't fit my feet <laughs> yeah yeah and it's i have to change them out like almost every six months yeah and you're supposed to do that i think that's like a thing yeah like may, maybe a little bit earlier sometimes too because um we went to like we went to i didn't wear the metcons at disney just just oh god that'd be a, a nightmare but i had these air max shoes that i i rarely wore and I, and I walked around dizzy with them and my feet were dying, yeah. dying. And I'm like, these are Air Max shoes They I should have, they should be comfortable. And so yeah. I really went to the outlet store and got like these cheap Metcons. And also, cause I had the old, my, the black ones that I had, and I had all those like, okay, let's get rid of these. And then I got another, another pair for the, uh, like a normal casual shoe, walking shoe man like it felt so much better like i yeah. like put them on i'm like oh my god like this is <laughs> and i'm like yeah and I, i'm like i know this is not going to be all like you know butterflies and in, in you know danny lions after, after like the next like couple months it's going to be like okay well i need to look for a new shoe yeah so especially with my like you know being six six and like 220 so yeah right <laughs> all, 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 all that weight so but uh yeah and it's also amazing like for for lifters you see all these like super heavy weight weightlifting weightlifters and like yeah. how the hell are those shoes supporting these guys i don't know and the weight in the weight that they're catching yeah it's nuts i don't i don't get it i don't know i don't even wear i have innovate lifters which i really love them but i don't um i don't wear lifters unless i'm doing like a heavy back squat i don't wear them for olympic lifts because i think i it pulls me forward because like i I have pretty good lower body mobility where I don't need them. So mm -hmm. I feel like they, they don't help me much. They just kind of like make me fall forward. Um, but the, what the innovates I do have, they're, they're black, which is not like me at all. Um, but I just like them. this. You gotta paint them. Yeah. I know it's, it's people are like, what are you buying? I'm like, I know, but they're like a matte black. It's just, it's different. I don't know. They hit different. It, it's okay. It's okay. Um, but yeah, I don't wear them. I try to like get into it. Cause like all the cool kids wear their lifters. I'm like, I can't do it. Just can't. Yeah. yeah. I, I, so I use my lifters on like mainly for like weightlifting, but with back squats or other squats, I try to use my other shoes, like the Metcons to kind of not like face forward. So just in yeah. case if it's like super heavy weight, I don't like lean forward and just use my back for the whole thing. So yeah. Sometimes even back squat, just bare squat, back squat, a barefoot. Like I, there's no rhyme or reason to anything I do. <laughs> yeah. That's <to> that conclusion. <laughs> yeah. But, um, also you're, you're a coach too. I forgot to mention that. So, um, I saw, I, I think it was on your stories. You had your, your clients at the gym do like a 20 rep max back squat or something like that. Yeah, we've been, it's a cycle that we're doing at our gym. So we're, we're in week. What is today? Today's, I don't know, Wednesday. So Thir Monday yeah, Wednesday, will be yeah. week six of the, of the week of, yeah, 20 rep max back squat. So every, we started at about 55%. Um, and then every week you add either five or 10 pounds and it first couple weeks are real nice. And then you're like, Oh shit. And then it just gets real and real and real. And it just, it, you get done and you feel like you're drunk. You get, mm -hmm. you feel, and you're just like, Oh God. And you have to like, I usually get done. And I just kind of like walk around. I'm like, all right, everything's fine. I just gotta get the life back into my body. And it's, yeah, it's, um, yes, I've done, this is maybe the third time I've, cause we do this like, we usually do this around the open each year and I'm like, Oh God, it's time again. But I, when I had shoulder surgery in 2018, I will never wish this on my worst enemy. In 2018, I had shoulder surgery and I couldn't, all I could do is legs. I mean, I did some upper body stuff, but I was like, I'm going to do the widow maker cycle. No, no, it's no. So what it is, you're also supposed to drink a gallon of milk with this, which I did not do. But so what it is, is you take your five rep max back squat. And you take off five pounds for every day you're going to do it. So it's like, all right, I'll do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday for six weeks. So I took off, I think it was like a hundred, whatever pounds it was. I started at 155. I'm like, all right, Monday, do 155, 20 times. Great. Wednesday, do 160, 20 times. Great. Friday, 165, 20 times. And you keep, you just keep doing it. 
it got to the it was so bad it got yep. to the point where i would go like on instagram live just so like three people would watch me so i wouldn't bitch out because i'd be by myself the thoughts that would enter my brain were so suicidal and just unhealthy that no one should ever do that ever and it was just <laughs> so i don't know how and i could not do this today but i guessed at the time my five rep max back scott was 245 I ended up getting to 240 and I did it. I failed the 15th rep. It's on YouTube somewhere. I did it 15, 14 and a half fucking times. I don't know how I did that because I couldn't, I don't think I could do that now. Yeah. But it worked and I was miserable and it hurts. So it, you would get to like rep 11 and 12. Your heart is like out of your body and you're just yep. like, oh my <laughs> and it's, oh my God, it's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. If you ever yeah. want to hate yourself, just do that. Just do it yeah. for a couple of weeks, three days a week. That's it. So, so I, I actually, I first heard that on Barbell Shrugged. And so they talked about it and I'm like, okay, let's let, I, I want to do it. So I did it. Oh, and I think, uh, gosh, when, when, like, I think it was like week four, I believe, like I was contemplating life just like you would hit like 12 or like that, like in like. And you're like holding the bar on your shoulder, which is creating more tension on you. And you're trying to breathe and trying to yeah. brace yourself. And it's just uh, like, it is so bad. miserable. So but bad. Like, no. the, gain, the gains that you get are just absolutely It was insane. insane. I was like, I can't believe I just did. Because the whole idea is to turn your five rep into your 20 rep. I'm like, yeah. there's no way. And I got so close to doing it. And I was like, ha. yeah, no, but that I will never do that. Not three days a week. No, I won't. Mm -hmm. Nope. Yeah. That was terrible. So I actually did that with, uh, I did the same 20 rep, 20 rep method on show, um, uh, military press. Oh, so I, cause I was like, okay, like uh -oh. I, I try like my, my handstand pushups are absolute garbage cause I'm so long. Okay. And so <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So I decided to start doing like, sh you know, shoulder to overhead, like not like the, the like, um, the jerk, but like just literally just strict press. press. Yeah. Yeah. yeah strict press. Sorry strict press and so i was just like okay i'll start with you know let's just say like 75 pounds so i did that for 20 and then i would do like the next day it would be like you know 80 okay no problem and then like when it started getting close to like the like the 100 115 like that's when it started like to burn burn and i would hold it here and like i couldn't drop my elbows down just to ra relax because like my shoulders would be like then you're burning. done yeah, yeah, we're done. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible because you don't even get like a my God, I had a demo something for one of the classes today. I'm just holding front rack for like 20 seconds. And I was like, I gotta put this down. <laughs> oh my god, that sound I that might be worse. I don't know, man. That's that's some pump right there. Yeah, and like you like the good thing for me is like once you, once I pass my head, it's like okay, I got it. But like if it's like right where my eyes no, that's where I get stuck. Yeah, yep. You're just over. like, why can't I like I'm there and, but you're not. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. And it's like, I'm trying to find ways to just like, just slowly get that over. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's not working at all whatsoever. Nope. You know? But nope, if, nope. If, if anyone wants to try that, you know, uh, strict press 20 rep cycle, go for Ooh. it. So what, so it's, I I'm trying to remember. So you, you said, I think you said it before, but it's your one, not, not the five rep max. The one I would listen to barbell shrugged. It's your one rep max. And then you do you, so. The way they did it was you had to go for like a um, your top set for the the day, like your max back squat, and then do the twenty reps after that at, at a different percentage. Oh, gross! So you find your one rep and then do a twenty rep based off of a percentage of your one rep. Yep. Good lord, they're just making up all sorts of ways to do this terrible shit. Fuck I know. Them. Yeah. And so oh. I did it, and I was like, I, I like I said, like I only lasted four weeks. I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm good. Like, That's it. I can't do anymore because I'm like literally sweating. And like I was, just... doing, I was doing this in my basement and I was just like middle of the night, not middle of the night. It was like, you know, nine, 10 o'clock and I'm trying to do these back squats. And it's just like, I'm, I'm like moaning and groaning. And like, my wife's like, what the fuck what are, are you doing, doing down, down there? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing down there? I'm like, oh, I'm just dying. Don't worry. So everybody's fine. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. Nope. I'd rather do like a Wendler cycle. Like I'm doing a Wendler cycle right now with bench because I, I will bench 200. I will friggin' do it. I don't care how long it takes. I'm doing it. So like I'm in the middle of, I'm going into my second cycle now. Um, that's way more fun than 20 reps, way more fun. Maybe cause it's bench, but anyway, yeah. 
I'd, I'd rather do like five Wendlers than one of the 20 rep thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. think I'd ever do the 20 rep max. Actually, uh, Misfit, the program that I follow, they do, um, they did the 20 rep max thruster. Oh, no. No. So just, just, just once. Like they would do it like once a week to no. see, to see where you're at. And I was like, I tried, I did 95 pounds and I was like, okay, I did okay. And like the main thing is, is like you have to pause all the way up the top just to kind of relax and then slowly come back and down. Then come back down. Yeah. See, it's like, I can, this is what blows. I can relate certain things that I've done for grid. I'm like, all right. I've, Cause I've done 20, I think it was either it was 95 or 110, And I had to do, was it 15 reps or 20 or whatever. Well, like I, I need an audience. I need crazy adrenaline. I need like whatever <laughs> happens on that grid. I need that. Cause if I were to do that on my own, I'm like, I don't want to do that. Nope. Yep. No, ma'am. No, sir. No. Nope. Yeah. That's. Ugh. Yeah. And all, and all my training is at like four 30 in the morning. And there's like, sometimes at the gym, God bless your soul. There no, is, there is no music whatsoever sometimes. That's so, crazy. and it's like, no. Nope. all right, I guess I have to, I guess, I guess I have to dig deep today. <laughs> that is a special kind of that's, that's dedication right there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you I don't no, want to see me at four thirty in the morning. No. Nope. Yeah. I mean, I have no choice. If I don't, if I don't go there at four thirty, like I'm not working out. Yeah. There's, there's no way because, like, I got the kids. I got you know helping out my wife, and then, like I got to do other things, and it's just like, yeah, not not. You got to adult. You got to like life. You know, God. Yeah. 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 God forbid I want to work out. So <laughs> you know, and may, may, maybe do something and hopefully move up in the CrossFit. You know. Mm, yeah. So, but uh. So we're getting close to the end, but I, I, I know you're a nutrition coach. And so I kind I had a question for you. Yeah. So, um, obviously this is about my family. So my, my wife is getting the kids to go vegan. Okay. And so I, I, so for me, I don't want to go vegan. I I'm okay. Like for like, I'll eat meat for like breakfast and lunch. And then for dinner, I'll have like a vegan meal with like the family and stuff like that. So do you think it's, it's good for me to do that, to maintain like, you know, strength and all that stuff? Because I know vegan, I've, I've heard that like you lose a little bit of muscle mass because you don't get like that meat protein or anything like that. So is it okay for me, you think to, to do a vegan dinner like every night and then just have like, you know, meat the rest of the day? Yeah, I mean, so being vegan obviously is it's harder to get enough protein, right? Um, yep. And it depends on how picky you are because some people are vegan and they they do fine with it, but they don't mind getting most of their sources from like tofu or but they'll find things like beans or even like things like quinoa, like things. There are enough things out there that can help, you know, but it's there's not as much variety obviously as if you weren't vegan. So um, it's not impossible, and you're as long as you're getting enough protein throughout your day you'll be fine. Okay. You'll be fine. The thing that okay. kills me about being vegan is people automatically associate vegan with being healthier. And then I'm like, Oreos are vegan. Remember that. It's all I'm going to say. So, cause a lot of times when you're getting vegan substitutes, it's a chemical shit storm and you're, you're just substituting the meat to try to get a meat like thing that just has so much garbage in it that you're, you're defeating the purpose of trying to be healthier. If that's the reason you're trying to do it. Mm -hmm. when you're just putting all sorts of bullshit in your body. So yep. that, that part always gets me. People are like, oh, I'm going to be vegan. And I, here's my vegan, whatever they call it, vegan burger. And it's like, what are you eating? It's like, oh, but this is healthier. I'm like, read the label, you know? So as long as people are aware of what they're actually doing, great. But yeah, it's not impossible to maintain muscle being vegan. Um, I could never do it, but that's just me. But yeah, you want I think that'll be great that you still be able to like eat dinner with your family and like do something together. Um, just you could there's plenty of ways to still to still be able to do that. Yeah. If you're eating meat throughout the day, you're still getting plenty of protein, you'll be all right. Okay. So we we actually speaking of the burgers, we had impossible burgers today. So yeah. no. and it's yeah, and it's like we so there was another another burger that we had a little while ago. I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh it's not the impossible burger, it was something else, and it tasted like absolute dog shit. Like it was so bad. I'm like, do not buy these again. These are so <laughs> Yeah. So bad. So bad. And it, I, I go ahead. I cut you off. And, and I know you got and then like there's other ones where like, it's like it's like a fake chicken patty, which is like fine because it doesn't it 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 works a little bit, but it's just yeah. like it's not like the burgers that are like that don't 
that they try to make it look look like a burger, taste like yeah. a burger, and it's like, like you said, there's like so many chemicals in there that it's oh like, my god, it's frightening. What, what, what the hell is this? I don't know why. So why don't they? Why do they have to call it like a burger? Like why? This is my. This is I never understood this. Like if you want to be vegan, great, do your thing. But why are they always trying to make foods that are meat when they don't want to eat meat? Just call it something I, different. So, so I, 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 I watched this show. It was, um, oh gosh, you are what you eat. So they yeah, had a, they, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if the for the listeners out there, they did a study on a set of twins, twins. like a bunch, a bunch of twins. So one was yeah. a omnivore, and the other one was vegan. And so they kind of did all the blood work, and I don't know why they did the sexual simulation part on that little show, but whatever. <laughs> whatever. So, uh, but you know. But the guy from Impossible Burger was on the sh on the show, and he was like saying that the reason why we try to make it look like an actual burger is to make like kind of like tr almost like trick the brain to say like, "Hey, I'm actually eating meat, but I'm not. It's like it's but it's vegan or something like that. Like the, to 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 like not look like it's like yeah. Not to but if meat's the problem, people. why are you trying to trick yourself into eating meat? Like I get the logic. I just, I just want to understand the logic. Yeah. Like, I don't care what you do. If you, that's great. If you want to do that, perfect. But like, what? That's like, that's like saying, I don't know. Like I hate the color red, but I'm going to wear a color that's red, but call it something different. And, and like, and wear pink and be like, I'm going to get a dark pink, but I'm going to call it. I don't know. I, that probably made no sense, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I got it. And it's I like, you, even for cheese too, like they have that, like some of the cheeses that they have are just ugh, ugh. yeah. Like, oh my! So uh, another story. My sister. Fun fact: My sister has triplets, um, and they had a nanny, and she was uh, very vegan. Like no, like you know, sometimes people are like, oh, I eat, I'm vegan, but I eat this. But she's very vegan. She came to our Christmas Eve dinner, and she brought vegan chicken wings. Do you know what vegan chicken wings are? Is it like cauliflower or something? It's like that? freaking cauliflower and hot sauce. Yeah. We're from Buffalo, okay? You do not, you do not say you're bringing vegan. First of all, vegan and just Buffalo. You know that's that's like eating ranch with your chicken wings. That's also a cardinal sin because it's blue cheese only. Vegan, I can't just say it's cauliflower with hot sauce. I don't like hot things, but at least I know what I'm getting into. Yeah, it was the most confusing thing. I uh, why call it chicken wings? I don't know. Just call it just call it cauliflower. It's not yeah. a chicken wing. Yeah. Oh, I can't. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I mean, like, I, I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind it, but it's just like, it's some of the stuff. It's like, why, why make it like that? But that's just, I don't know. What, what do I know? I'm just a talking head. I don't know anything. I don't, <laughs> what do I know? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're getting close to the end. So I, I know last time we had some, uh, you know, rapid fire questions. Obviously they're not rapid fire. You can take as long as you want. So, um, so I know, I know this is the beginning of the year. So do you have any goals, that, um, even with like the brigade personal, like business or anything like that, like coming up, like towards the end of the year, you want to hit? Um, I think like with CrossFit, like there's so many changes going on that it's like hard to pinpoint something because it's like, every time we think we know what's going on, they're like, this is now happening. So we're like, oh, okay. Um, and I mean, any competitive masters athlete, like your goal is to go to the games. Right. So, and I think now it's like, this is the, probably the best opportunity I've ever had. Um, cause I've been so close in the past few years and now they've made it a little bit more, um, widespread. Um, so it's definitely always on my radar. Um, business wise, I have, um, I have a couple of things that I've been kind of like putting off that I would like to not put off anymore. Um, just as far as like some of my programs, like expanding them and making them um, just a little bit more in depth and just, I'm always adding to those types of things. So I think I guess like a vague goal to actually like doing it instead of avoiding it um, mm -hmm. or putting it off doing that. Yeah. Um, and with the brigade um, I'm taking my Marissa, my, she's like, um, she's come on board now. She's been my teammate. This is like her fourth season. Um, her and I are taking even more ownership now. So Chris, um, was him and I were co-owners. He's taking more of a back step now. So, uh, a, a back, he's just going to do like the coaching aspect of it. So Marissa and I are really in charge of everything now. Um, so I think for us, our, our main goal is to just make this one of our more successful seasons. And, 
um, just make it fun again for everyone. And we want to make playoffs. We want to win the whole thing. It's a, I think that's the goal of every single team, right? So if we can get back there, this first step would be to get to playoffs and then go from there. Um, I really think that would be a, a good step for us because it's, it's possible. It's in our sights and I think it's something we could do. So. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Um, so do you have a, a new favorite book that you like to read? Um, so there was, oh, I started reading one or, okay. I'm a big like audio. Cause I'm in the car all the time and I'll put on like, just, so I'm more of a podcast person. Um, and I started oh, listening. Oh, I, I, I know, I know what it is. I know, <laughs> you, I know what your favorite podcast is. Yes. It is the type one lifting podcast. Yes, it very yes. much is. Yes. I knew it. Okay. Thank, um, thank you. Thank you for listening. Sure. Everyone listen to type one podcast. That's that's it. Um, but there's um like the herd mind herd mentality. Um, there's a couple like just like a CrossFit stuff that I always have in the background that I'm just kind of listening to. Um and one of my clients and I were talking about the atomic habits and like why is this taking me so long to start reading? And I'm like, I'm an idiot. So that I've been getting into more. Um, so I think those are probably where I'm at right now. So yeah. So there's a book I kind of want you to listen to or, or, okay. or, or read. So, um, I don't know the, I don't know the author's name, but it's the success pr principles. It's the, it's the creator of chicken soup for the soul. Okay. So he has one. It's like, it's like 500 pages, but it's like, it's really good. Like you read it. You're like, Oh, okay. All right. This it's, this. Like, what is it called? The success principles. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll send it to you. So, okay. um, but it, it's, it's really good. It's, it's like, it's almost like a slap in the face. Like when you read it, you're right. like, Oh shit, I should have done that over like a long time ago. Perfect. So, so yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, it's definitely good. Um, so what is, so uh, this is a new question that I added. So what is something that you like to do that no one knows about? Um, man, I'm pretty, I feel like I don't have any secrets. Um, something that they might not know. I like, I'm a really good ax thrower, like bizarrely good ax thrower. Yeah. <laughs> this was a recent discovery. Um, I've gone a couple of times now and I'm like, this is dumb. And I throw it and I'm like, this is awesome. So <laughs> yeah, I enjoy ax throwing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I've never done it. There's like, there's one place it's like down the street from my house, like not down the street, but like a half hour down, down the way from my house. And I'm like, I've always wanted to do it, but I'm like, just go do it. It's like yeah. awkward at first, but then like you get into it. Cause you're like, wait a minute, what's this thing to stick in the thing? Yeah. Okay. Let's All go right, try awesome. it. Yeah. So is there anything, uh, what, so what's in your gym? I know you have a new gym bag. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what is in your gym bag? Oh, geez. Oh, uh, everything. I, it, there's just so much crap. It, it's unnecessary. I mean, I have two pairs of grips. I have my rope. I have four pairs, two pairs of knee sleeves and also knee pads because old. And sometimes when I do lunges, I have my friend, my teammate, Lindsay, she gave me her old volleyball pads, knee pads. So I put those under my knee sleeves because I got old knees. Um, I have my wrist guards. I have a wad and done thumb tape. I have um, a callus thing that I, I like should be using more than I am. I have chapstick that I don't use. I have, um, <laughs> some scrunchies. I have, um, my ESE sounds things, um, a scraper, a gas and scraper tool thing that I should also be using more voodoo floss bands that I don't use. Um, shoes. There's a lot, some snacks probably that are expired that I should throw out. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. A lot of stuff. Yeah. It's like, it's like you almost like once, once every like two months, you have to like go through your bag. I go through like, it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, that doesn't need to be in there anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so how, the next question is, so how do you, how, how do you want people to know you as? Like philosophically? Sure. Like whatever. <laughs> um, geez. Uh, like, I just want people to think of me as somebody like that doesn't take themselves too seriously, that is dedicated, but also not like, you know, too cool for school. Um, that just likes to enjoy fitness and like personable loves talking to people and hopefully they can be like, and I can be like a role model for people, especially kids like younger, um, like teenagers and stuff like that. And young girls like, Hey, I can lift and like, it's cool, you know? So, yeah. 
yeah. I, I, I forgot to about I talk about great kids a little bit, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk that we'll talk about that next time. So, okay. right, so just real quick about that one. So, are you are you looking to expand up to like Georgia or anything like that with great kids, or what's the next step for um, that? That I mean, in the future, I would love it to be you know nationwide. It's just it's harder with the kids simply because it's not just them; they're relying on their parents to drive them everywhere so it's a little bit more logistically difficult i mean we have kids from like tampa orlando and, and all the way across to miami you know because like the south and like the we're kind of spread across florida um and depending on where they live would determine like which if they're on the north or south so okay. but it can be it's definitely tougher with kids um because there's some some badass kids in other states and i'm like man i wish you were closer but like for them to travel would be a lot a lot more difficult than, um, you know, obviously kids that are local. Um, but if we can expand, cause we want to get a couple more teams cause we have one North and one South. Ideally we would have two North and two South. Um, so yeah, if we, if we can and figure out a way to make it easier for the families to travel, cause like kids travel for like, I travel all the time for soccer, you know, yeah. I would I fly here, drive there, whatever. So it's not impossible. Um, it's just, Grid's not a typical sport. It takes a little bit more education to like get them to understand what it is first. Even like kids who do CrossFit, they're like, what's grid? Is it CrossFit? We're like, no, it's different. different. So um, I think as, because the kids pages too, like the kids, even this past season, that was probably like one of our bigger kids seasons. So I think as we continue to grow, it'll be a little bit easier, but it's definitely going to take some time. But that's, I mean, long-term, I think that's definitely possible. Okay. All right. Awesome. Yeah. So um, where next last question. So, where could people contact you if they want to get feet picks or if they want to ask you any other questions about like, you know, grid or, or like doing the masters. Uh, so like non weird things, um, Instagram, uh, it's the gym underscore, not a runway. I was eventually going to change that when I first started, but it, no, it works. It, so it. It's, you I'm stuck it. with it now. Some people, yeah. they, they like, aren't you? It's I'm like, yeah, that's my name. Uh, so yeah, it's the gym underscore, not a runway. Um, or my uh, nutrition page is OPB nutrition and same on Facebook. Um, I don't do YouTube yet, but apparently I'm going to start doing it. So yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, Hey, Thank you for coming on the show. I really do appreciate it. And actually like learning more about grid because yeah. obviously it's a growing sport and it should get some recognition compared to where it's at now. Like we're like, like more, you know, nationwide or whatever. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I'll obviously love to have you back on maybe during the season or after the season and kind of see where everything's at. All right. Sounds good. All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. See ya.